I'd now like to demonstrate for you the VSS radar library. I'm going to use one of the standard examples, with a, which is a pulse Doppler chirped radar system. So this is a top level schematic. It's using a number of the elements from the library for both RF and for uh, DSP signal processing. Let's uh, zoom in at the top here and I'll take you through some of the functionality. Um, on the far left side we have a, a linear chirp generator. Um, that's a standard element from the library. If we click on this you can see we can set up a number of things like the PRF, the duty cycle and the frequency range of the element. Moving to the right, we go through a coupled correlator, um, which will uh, correlate the returns from the um, target and um, create a signal ready for data processing. Moving on to the right side, we have an RF transmitter. This is a sub-circuit, which is one of the standard elements from the library. Obviously, you can replace this with uh, blocks of your own design. Um, it gives you a number of top-level parameters such as the um, compression points, uh, local oscillator frequencies, noise figures and so forth. If we push down into that block you'll see it's a sing, uh, simple um, single up conversion design with a local oscillator and some filtering and amplification. We then move on to the target model and the target model allows you to set things like um, the um, power levels of jammers, um, also the distance to the target and the target velocity. If I push down into that block, you'll see that it's quite a complex sub-circuit. It actually consists of the TX and RX switching, the transmit and receive antennas, and also the target model itself, which has a radar cross-section. So let's just zoom in to the central area. The transmit antenna is actually set up with a, a, a file-based antenna pattern, which gives you a 3D pattern in terms of theta and phi. The same is true of the receive antenna, but in the, in the case of the receive antenna, we can set it up to have multiple inputs. This allows us to simultaneously take account of the target return, but also any particular inputs, any arbitrary theta phi value from clutter and also for jammers. The target model models the RCS of the target and its statistics um, and also the, um, the distance as you can see from some of these parameters. If I push into the target model, it, it itself is a sub-circuit. It has um, a receive and transmit antenna because the target must receive the signal and reflect it back to the radar. It also includes a block for radar cross-section and the ability to add various noise sources such as swirling um, distributions to model the, um, the statistics of the RCS. Also, um, there are multipath blocks and delay blocks which add the delay and the Doppler due to the target velocity. I've moved back to the top level of the diagram. Let's continue to look at the signal processing. So after we come from the target model, the return is passed through to an RF receiver block. Again, this is parameterized with um, things like gain, um, compression point, um, bandwidth of the filters, etc. It's a, a sub-circuit in exactly the same way as the transmit module and can be customized by the user. The output of the receiver is fed back to the correlator and when that's correlated with the incoming chirp then um, it will be uh, de-chirped down to an impulse and those impulses together with any noise and clutter are sent down to the DSP in the receiver. So now we have some of the standard blocks from the radar library that handle the signal processing of the return signals. The first one is a moving target indicator and that is basically a Z-domain filter which um, acts as a cone filter to remove low frequency clutter and signals that are static and therefore are running at the PRF frequency. Any moving target will fall outside of those nulls and will start to be uh, accepted by the receiver. So in, what this block does is to eliminate clutter and sta stationary targets. The next block is a moving target detector the grayed out block here is a standard one from the library. It does a two-dimensional FFT on a number of returns and it calculates the distance and the speed of the target. 
We've replaced it in this simulation by an equivalent LabVIEW block, and that's using this LabVIEW co-simulation here to run a functionally equivalent um, MTD block, but written in LabVIEW code. This gives us two important advantages. The first is we can make use of LabVIEW's 3D plotting to look at the range Doppler processing of the receiver in the presence of realistic RF and noise. And secondly, we can take the algorithm that we developed in LabVIEW and ultimately we can change that from floating point through to fixed point and finally we can target that onto an FPGA to make a, an instrument that can be used against uh, a real world DUT. Moving through to the right side of the graph, we have a constant force alarm rate processor. This takes the, the return and also processes the noise in adjacent samples. When it has an average of the noise, it sets a noise threshold in order to set a constant false alarm rate. And from that, we can extract a number of measurements like the distance to the target, the, um, the output of the various uh, Doppler processing bins, and we can also calculate the familiar S-curve of probability of detection. So let's zoom out to the complete uh, schematic again. Before I run the simulation, there's a couple more things I'd like to mention. This simulation has a dynamic target. The target is being controlled by an environment file brought in from AGI's STK software. This sweeper is used to pull in data from this file. So as the simulation time runs, the velocity of the target, the theta and phi, in other words, the angle, the point and angle of the target, and also the distance are all varying as the simulation runs. Further, as I mentioned before, when we run the simulation, it will invoke LabVIEW, and LabVIEW will do the uh, data signal processing on the return targets, and it will generate a 3D range Doppler plot. So I'm now going to run the simulation. simulation status window has started up and you can start to see here that we're getting some chirp signals and some de-chirped returns as the simulation runs. There's a number of outputs from the MTI filter as shown in this graph here. If I now open LabVIEW there is a custom film here which represents the MTD FFT processor. And that processor has a 3D graph associated with it, which I'll open up and we'll just expand a little. So that graph represents the return signal from the target which is shown with 500 hertz of Doppler and at a, a low range. And also a broadband jammer is represented here in one of the Doppler bins. Now as the target moves away from us, as the range increases and the Doppler increases, the effective clutter will, will increase and so will the jammer as our wanted signal reduces in amplitude. And at some point, because we only have one CIFAR processor, um, there will come a point where it's overwhelmed by the jammer and we can use this to evaluate the radar's performance. So as the sweep progresses, our wanted signal will recede in distance and also in amplitude, but the jammer will start to dominate. Okay, we can see the jammer starting to, where well, it's not increasing amplitude, what's happening is that the wanted signal is actually reducing relative to the jammer's value. Okay, and now we can see that the jammer is now totally dominating. This concludes the software demonstration. Thank you very much for watching.